Welcome to Speak for Yourself, Marcellus Wally Emmanuel Acho. It's Super Bowl week, y'all, and it's happening right here, so let's get right to it. Matthew Stafford is only a few days away from making his Super Bowl debut in his first season in L.A. Rams quarterback knows the magnitude of adding a win to his resume, saying, quote, these opportunities are what you play the game for. Mm. Acho, Matthew Stafford has the most at stake in the Super Bowl? He does. Matthew Stafford is the one player this Super Bowl whose Hall of Fame resume is contingent mm. upon a Super Bowl win. Mm. Matthew Stafford is the only player whose Hall of Fame destiny, rather, is dependent exclusively upon whether the Rams win the Super Bowl or not. Y'all think about this with me. Von Miller, he's already going to go Hall of Fame. First ballot, over 100 yeah, sacks, yeah. plus Super Bowl, plus a Super Bowl MVP. He's good. Aaron Donald, he's going to the Hall of Fame first ballot. He's been a pro bowler every year. He's been in the National Football League, seven consecutive all-pro appearances. He's only been in the league eight years. He's good. Lower. So every player playing in the Super Bowl who prepared to go to the Hall of Fame, only Matthew Stafford is his Hall of Fame destiny contingent upon this win or this loss. Jalen Ramsey. He's not in the Hall of Fame right now, as it stands. Think? Nah, not, not right now. Only been in the league, what, six years? But he's so been I, the highest rated corner two of the last four years. And he got a name, and he got money, and he got me, game, and he in L.A. And again, I love Ramsey. I just think give Ramsey three more years, he's a lot. But okay. I just don't think he's played long enough I get you to get that. into the Hall. I think uh, Ramsey only came to the league in 16. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Damn, that was fast. <laughs> so I know. He, he got good quick. <laughs> um, so even if Ramsey were to win the Super Bowl and retire right now, Okay. I don't think he'd be a Hall of Fame first ballot. Okay, lot. okay. Over time, sure, Ramsey Drew would get Pearson, in. Drew Pearson, 88th ballot. Some, exactly. I hate you, yeah. so. I mean, you got in. I ain't in. You ain't Christ. in. What you left at? A minute into the show, <laughs> and you taking shots. Drew Pearson is getting shots Oh, you right didn't now. see me in the dressing room downstairs. I've been taking shots. Anyway. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, but Matthew Stafford, man, he's the one dude where it's like, if Stafford does not win, he's mm. not in the hall. Mm. If Stafford does win, he is in the hall. Facts. So for Matthew Stafford... Everything is dependent. Everything is contingent. His destiny legitimately lies in this game. Mm. Stafford can't go down right now as kind of the uh, the Dan Marino because he's not Dan Marino yet as mm. far as statistically. Mm. So Stafford realizes, dang, I'm either going to end up as Matt Ryan and Phillip Rivers or I'm going to end up more like Eli Manning. Eli Manning, he sways the ledger instantly. Hall of Fame? Yeah, of course Eli's in. Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan, Hall of Fame? That's the thing. So Matthew Stafford, he has to figure out what side of the ledger, what side of the line does he want to fall on? Is he going to fall on that Matt Ryan, Phillip Rivers line, or is he going to fall on that Eli Manning line? Okay, I love how you built the argument up. Um, you just kept it pretty simple. you just like, who else in this situation has the most to gain? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, he has the most at stake. I respect that. It's low-hanging fruit, and I felt a little tricked by this question, you know, in prep as I was sitting there taking my shots. Hydration <laughs> situation. Um, I was like, damn, this is just too simple of a question, too simple of an answer. But then I started to realize, okay, if you lose the Super Bowl, everyone has something at stake. And the stake is going to be what they drive through your heart, that pain you're going to feel if you lose the Super Bowl, I assume. You lose a Super Bowl, two things happen. One, you lost the biggest game of the year. Mm -hmm. And the second thought, the afterthought is, will I ever get another opportunity mm -hmm. to be in this game again? So that's a hell of a stake right to the heart, one of those vampire movies or something. But then the second stake and this is why Matthew Stafford is sitting there like, uh-oh, yeah, I do have the most at stake. It's because the media, us, everyone out there is going to twist and turn the stake that's in Matthew Stafford's heart. Think about it. When we see OBJ laying there dead if they lose, we ain't going to trip. Like, OBJ, you lucky you out of Cleveland. Shut up. Be happy. You'll get back, maybe. And you look at Cooper Cup, and you're like, man, you had maybe the most productive season ever at the wide receiver position, including postseason. Man, shut up. Just die quietly, right? But then you see Matthew Stafford, and you kick him a little bit. Like, he dead? All right, now twist it. Let's make sure he understands. You were brought here to do one thing, which is not lose the Super Bowl like Jared Goff did. And then the media, the headlines, the newspapers get sold because of that. Think about it. Anybody else in this Super Bowl – if they lose, where can you sell that story? I'm thinking maybe Sean McVay. You're looking at Sean McVay like, here you go again. All right, the first time you got out coach, first time you were nervous, first time you overprepared, what's your excuse this time? But that's not going to sell a lot of papers. Matthew Stafford, 
single-handedly is the only story I see where you can drive the stake in his heart and twist it. So that is very good, and I like that answer. And I like my answer, but I did realize after a while, both our answers are short-sighted. Mm. I could contend that Joe Burrow has a lot, if not the most, at stake. Here's why I will say this. Allen Iverson never knew how much was at stake when he went to the finals against the Los Angeles Lakers. He never knew after taking game one what was at stake for the rest of his career. Charles Barkley, when he went to the finals while he was with the Suns in 93, he never knew what was at stake in that finals appearance. Mm -hmm. um, you can continue on. Dan Marino, 1984. He never knew what was at stake when he went to the Super Bowl that year yeah. because none of those individuals figured that they would never go back yeah. to the biggest game. Yeah. Joe Burrow, second year, like Dan Marino, second year in the biggest game. We're all assuming, oh, well, Joe Burrow will play a long career, and clearly he'll go back to the Super Bowl several times. Mm. But what if he doesn't? Chuck never did. Marino never did. AI not at that level, never did. What if they don't? Mm. I think that we are taking for granted yeah. what is at stake for Joe Burrow. Because if Joe Burrow does not go back again, this is it. This is Joe Burrow's legacy-defining moment. For a guy like Matthew Stafford, his legacy-defining moment came in year 12, year 13. So we're like, oh, clearly there will be other defining moments for Joe Bur Burrow. But what if there aren't? And mm. that, to me, is the big question that nobody's talking about. Patrick Mahomes is in the AFC. Mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson is in the AFC. Josh Allen is in the AFC. Baby. Justin Herbert is in the AFC. Ooh, ooh. There is a chance that Joe Burrow could be left out of this game of musical chairs. Mm -hmm. Again, why do I say that? It was Manning and Brady on the inside for so many years. Phillip Rivers was on the outside looking in. Every now and then, Ben Roethlisberger, he stuck his head in there, but then he bounced his head back out. But it was Manning and Brady on the inside. Joe Flacco stuck his head in there, but he stuck his head back out. Mm -hmm. It was Manning and Brady on the inside. Joe Burrow, we don't know if he's actually going to be in the inside room. He might be Joe Flacco. He might be Ben Roethlisberger. It might end up being Mahomes and Allen. It might end up being Mahomes and Burrow. It might end up being Burrow and, Burrow and Herbert. We're not yet sure because it's so early still. All of those quarterbacks are 26 and under. Mahomes, Herbert, Allen, Jackson, Burrow. So we don't actually know yet, Sal, who's going to be in the inner room. So what does that mean? When you get in that room, you better get yours. Flacco found a way to got, get his. Ended up with $100 million. Yeah. Roethlisberger, way, Roethlisberger found a way to get his a couple times. There you go. But if Big Ben... Goes 0 for 2 in those Super Bowls? We're not talking about him like a first ballot Hall of Famer. If, uh, if uh, oh, uh, really? Joe Flacco doesn't get his, we're not talking about him and Ravens' legacy. And he surely doesn't get $100 million if he doesn't have 11 touchdowns, no picks, en route hmm. to winning a Super Bowl. So because we don't know how this story will unfold for Joe Burrow, but we do know all those AFC quarterbacks are great, Joe Burrow has a ton at stake, and it's better he recognize that now than like Charles Barkley, Dan Marino, Allen Iverson retroactively. Interesting. You're trying to create an urgency that doesn't exist. But should. But should. In my mind, yes, sir. No, in my mind as well. And we've all been in those situations before, and it's impossible to lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if you're Joe Burrow in your second year, there's no way you could create the same urgency as, let's just say, John Elway when he was winning his back-to-backs in his latter years, in his late 30s, right? You just can't. Like, you try to fake it, but you can't make it a reality. So what you're trying to do is tell me some hypotheticals. Well, Ben Roethlisberger did win one yes, in his second year, right? And he did go 2-0 in the Super Bowl, yes, right? Sir. And then there's a step down. So Joe Burrow's like, all right, I got to be like Big Ben. But, man, that's a tall task to win one and then come back and win it again. Okay. What if I don't win? Could I go one for one in the Super Bowl and still be amazing? Like make it back and lose that one or lose this one and make it back and win? Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson comes to mind. Young Russell Wilson did that. How is he thought of? Very highly, mm -hmm. except Ryan Clark, I guess. Who, who, somebody don't like him right now. Um, point being, Russell Wilson's highly regarded first ballot Hall of Famer. All right. What if I could go just Ofa? Hey, this is all I get. Dan Marino, start off high as well. Think about it. See, this is what people do when people don't want to articulate. We always run through the gamut of consequences mm -hmm. before we create our urgency. That's just the fight or flight in us. So now you see Joe Burrow's going to go out there full focus, fully attentive to this moment. But, dog, when you lose, if you lose, someone's going to tap you on the shoulder and remind you, it's all right, big dog, get them next time. 
And then something inside of you going to say, there might be a next time. But that's a lie. That's not a lie. Here's why. You don't know if it's true, but that's different than it's a lie. It's a lie at the time because you don't know if there's going to be a next time. So you'll get him next time is a lie because it's not the truth. What, what that's what I just said. Time? You just going to regurgitate what I say just so you can get better. credit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hell still no. in all your takes. There's a uh, difference. Here, here's, here's my point. So not a lie. It. Personalize it. Your experience is your expertise. I've never been a Super Bowl. I can't Marcellus personalize Marcellus Wiley said that too. <laughs> um, uh, I go to the national championship. Closest thing you can get to a Super Bowl at the collegiate level. Yeah, I go to the uh, national championship uh, uh, at the Rose Bowl, 2010. University of Texas playing Alabama. I'm a sophomore. I'm starting at the time. My dog. We go to we go against Alabama. They hadn't been to a chip in a long time. We hadn't been to a chip since 05, the Vince Young game. We play in that game. We lose 36 to 24, something like that. We're mm-hmm. in the locker room mm-hmm. afterwards. People crying, people mm. crying. Our seniors, mm. Earl Thomas, knew he was departing to the mm. National Football League. Brian Arakpo knew he was departing to mm. the National Football League. Guys in there crying. I'm chilling. Now, I was sad because we lost, but I was like, yo, my first year we went 12-1, and went to the Fiesta Bowl, beat Ohio State. My second year we went 13-0, and went to the National Championship, then barely lost to Bama, starting quarterback, got hurt. <laughs> I'm about to go my junior year. Again, my senior year, probably going to go again. I ain't really tripping like, sorry, Colt McCoy. Sorry, you ain't win yours. Sorry, Earl Thomas. Sorry, you ain't win yours. Sorry, Arakpo. Sorry, you ain't win yours. But your boy boy. still got two more years. So you were smiling in the locker room. No, but I wasn't crying. I was like, I still got time. I was like, hey, Acho, Mm -hmm. you'll get him. Next time. All right. Well, guess what happened next time? What happened next time? We Tell went me. five and seven. And guess what Damn. happened a year you after that? You got sorry or whatever? You got sorry quick. A year after that, we went eight and five. There was no next time. Really? Back what bowl is that? What's the eight and five bowl? Holiday bowl. Out here in San Diego. Holiday bowl. I know it's landing your stadium. <laughs> <laughs> out here in San, Christmas Di- Eve? in San Diego. When I realized at that Bumps. point in time, sales, no, these sorry. tears coming to my eyes. <laughs> what I realized at that point in time, man, there might not be a next time. Mm. So I didn't realize, mm. and I wish somebody told me, hey, Acho, everything is at stake for you uh. in this game. For Julio Jones and Trent Richardson and Mark Ingram and Greg McElroy and Dante Hightower, all them dudes at Alabama, they had a next time. They had several more next times. But for your boy Mm. in Texas, there was no next time. So the most was actually Mm. at stake for me, a guy who was playing in the national championship game but was never going to play in the national championship game again, albeit I was going Mm. to be in college again. Mm. So the most was actually at stake Mm. for me and not the guys in the Alabama squad. Okay, let me help you out here right here because you're jaded. You going to give me a national championship? No, no, no. no. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I I don't know. Well, they did that already to Vince Young and the the Heisman, and they did that to your team. Y'all proud of that one? I don't know. USC. Fight, fight, fight. Um, Here we go. You are not Joe Burrow. So there might not be a next time for Emmanuel Acho, but <laughs> you may not be Joe Burrow either. Here's the, here's the problem with what you just gave me an example, and I, I'm going to help you out on this one. That was a bad model. That was not analogous, as How they say. Not, it was literally analogous. You ready? Please. What's the life expectancy of a, a college player? Four years. Thank you. What's the NFL player? Yes. Uh, you, you think you caught me? <laughs> now, my, fo- my son and I just had this conversation. And let me, I'm going to loop this around, y'all, but y'all got to walk with me. About a month ago, I'm looking at my son, and we just sitting there and putting him to bed. I told you it takes five minutes. Sometimes it takes an hour. This time it was taking about an hour. I'm sitting there, and we're talking, and I was like, man, you are getting big because he's doing more things independently, right? And he's like, yeah. I said, one day you're going to be sitting right there doing your homework at your desk. The next thing you know, you're going to be out the house and going to college and coming back on vacation. Next thing you know, you're going to have your own life and your own family. And next thing you know, I'm going to be coming over to your house, checking in with you and amazing. And he got sad. And I was like, why are you so sad? He's like, daddy, I want to see you every day, every way. And I was, then I start crying. Right, he got me. He got me. MJ gets me all the time. He got me, right? And then... We took that conversation. I said, no, 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 Jim, MJ. He said, then next thing you know, you're going to be in the sky. That's what we say when it's over. He was like, I was like, now we boohoo and everybody balling, right? I said, no, 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 no. I said, daddy can live a long time. He said, you're 47. You're almost dead. And I was like, no. I said, do you know how long the longest person on earth has lived? He's like, what? I Googled it. 122 years old. Ah. And my son was like, daddy, you're not even halfway. Smart little kid. Expensive school. So let me get back to this. You ready? You gave me life expectancy in college, and you gave it to me in a pro. Mm-hmm. What's the longest someone ever played in college? Still four years. Yes, What's the longest somebody could play in the pro, especially at the quarterback position? Is Tom Brady anybody? 
22 years. So your model needs to be replicated five or six times. Now you feel bad because you know I caught you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you could go back to college five more times, maybe six, you think you get a national championship like maybe Let one more time? You like yes or no? Let Answer that for the people. No. <laughs> you are a damn Texas liar. There's still not one since. Well, so no, they still oh, ain't won a national championship. I need a better school oh, nine, to give an example ten. too. But you know my point. I get my you. point is in the NFL, you. it ain't over in four. It's if not. you're great. Right? It's not. So he's going to get some chances at this but again. Isn't so, but it's going to be tough. Isn't, to me, that's the biggest mistake you can make in sports. That's the biggest mistake you can make in accomplishment. That's the biggest mistake you can make in life, life. is thinking you might yes. have another chance. Yes. That's, that's a lie. It's not a lie Thank at the you. time. At the time, it is an ambiguity. But in, in, in totality, in hindsight, it can end up being the biggest lie we ever tell ourselves is that there will be more time. The biggest lie we ever tell, ever tell ourselves is that there will be another chance. The biggest lie we ever tell ourselves is, well, we have tomorrow. Because what if there isn't more time? What if there isn't another chance? What if you don't have tomorrow? Then you should have done it. You could have done it. And why didn't you do it today? So to me, the most is at stake. Oh, man. In totality. Also, for Burrow, because, bruh, if you do end up believing what could be a lie that there is more time or you got tomorrow, then he's going to look back like, yo, my second year in the league, we were playing a Rams team who we could have got. Our head coach came from the tutelage of the Rams head coach. We could have got them boys, bruh. Mm. The Rams fan base ain't even that grimy, ain't even that grueling. We really could have got them dudes. I had Jamar Chase. I had Joe Mixon. I, I had T. Higgins. I had Trey Hendrickson. I had Sam Hubbard. Like, we had a squad, and we ain't get them boys. Man, I wish I would have got them. I just, I just don't, personally, I don't subscribe to. I don't either, but you do. But that's your conscious thought talking right now, as my conscious thought is talking right now. One thing you can't lie to is your subconscious because it knows where to get the information from. It gathers it from everywhere, even the information you don't want it to attain. Let's just be real about this. Um, I, I heard this because I was listening to a book that was describing the intervals between your heartbeats. Boom, 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 boom. And it said something that was profound to me. It said no Two intervals of heartbeat are the exact same. None. You know what that means? That everything is going to be something that you can't program, you can't schedule, whether that's for good or for bad. You can't sit there and say it's always going to be good. You can't sit there and say it's always going to be bad. So in your situation, y'all never returned back to a national championship. But the team that beat y'all did. That's all I'm saying. And your subconscious ain't stupid. It's like, no, they did, so we will. But then it could be wrong because consciously we're thinking different. Damn, that was deep. Coming up, we're welcoming an all-pro to the show. Well, I'm already uh -oh. here. What y'all talking about? Oh, no. 49ers wide receiver Debo Samuel will make his Speak for Yourself debut later. But first, the spotlight is on Joe Burrow Sunday. But the Bengals' defense is putting in work, too. Tell you who's more important to their success. Burrow or defense? Next, Speak for Yourself. Psycho light note. Well, a lot of attention will be on Joe Burrow in the Super Bowl. Von Miller, defensive end for the Rams, called him the real deal, adding, quote, you definitely see shades of Tom Brady in this guy, close quote. But the Bengals' defense has also been steady Eddie in the playoffs, holding the Raiders and the Titans to under 20 points each, and the Chiefs to only three points in the second half. This has been the greatest debate on our show in the last two weeks, so we got to bring it now to the real deep lock. So, mm -hmm. who's more important to the Bengals' success? Is it the defense or Joey B? It's the one that you said first. It's the defense. Um, and I don't think that was a coincidence. Um, let's just be real about it. They need each other. We that's know that. Can we certain. be lazy? Yep. Can we be simple-minded? each other. Oh, it Put works both on camera, head. please, yes. so you can see the agreement. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Each other. Okay. Now let's go to Okay, war. let's go to war. <laughs> All right, let me pick. Let me choose my side. And let me rep my side. I know you're going to be a traitor and go on the other side, but let's talk this. Regular season, let's use that as our premise. Yes, sir. And now they're on a Super Bowl run. We'll see if they ultimately win the Super Bowl, but they're in the Super Bowl. Here's a sentence that is true that a lot of people are not saying out there. The defense has gotten better in the postseason and Joe Burrow has gotten worse. Now, let's start off with this on the prowl Bengals defense just to highlight what I'm saying. Let me make my case. Points per game allowed. You see it there. Yardage per game allowed. All dips. Better for the defense. Takeaways per game. Whoa, that's a huge spike. That's double. Sacks per game. And defense on money down, third down. Take that away. 
Let me tell you guys that Joe Burrow in the postseason, four touchdowns, two interceptions. The four games before to go on that run, 4-0, and to get to the postseason, 11 touchdowns, zero interceptions. But let me just give it to you in simple terms. His completion percentage went down from 76 to 69. His yards per game went down 90. His yards per attempt went down three yards. His passer rating went down 36. It's all good, big dog. I'm not trying to hate on you. I'm not trying to undermine you. But those defensive players need their props. So I want to hear your simple, concise Sir. layout. Why Joe Burrow, who's gotten worse in the postseason Sir. and the defense has gotten better in the yes, postseason, sir. is the reason that they're here. Yes, sir. I love doing this show. I do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you all a question. Producers, I'm going to ask you all one, two, sell. I'm going to ask you the same question. Did you prefer to be graded in a class on a curve or no curve? No curve. No curve. No curve. Why no curve, sir? Because I knew I was going to set the curve either way. So I wanted to (laughs) get an ultimate absolute A, 100. I love it. Um, I love it. Regardless of what you answered, let me break down the difference. Okay. If you are in a classroom and you are graded without a curve, Mm. then it does not matter how anybody else does. There you go. I ain't helping y'all. The only thing that matters is how do you do? If you get a 70, your 70 sticks. If you get an 80 on the test, your 80 sticks. There you go. If you get a 90 on the test, your 90 sticks. If you get a 50 on a test, your 50 sticks. No curve. It is irrelevant how anybody else does except yourself. Mm -hmm. Personally, I like to be graded on a curve. Now, why do I like to be graded on a curve? Because if I get a 50, but the mean (laughs) in that class, the average of that class on that test was a 35, I'm getting curved all the way up to an A. I'm getting curved all the way up to a 90. If I got a 70, but the average was a 60, curve me right on up to an A. If I got an 80, but the average was a 70, curve me right on up to an A. Because the only thing that matters is not how I did, but how did I do relative to how everyone else does. Let's go. The NFL playoffs are grading on a curve. Mm. It does not matter how Joe Burrow did, but how did Joe Burrow do Compared to everybody else in the class. Mm. How did Joe Burrow do compared to Derek Carr? How did Joe Burrow do compared to Ryan Tannehill? Don't because do he outplayed Derek Carr. He outplayed Ryan Tannehill. Curve him on up to an A. Who else he outplayed? Patrick Mahomes. Curve him right on up to an A. So, Sal, while you are looking at Joe Burrow Hold on. without what, what, a curve. What, 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 what's that little <laughs> orange thing right there that say second half OT? Why you can't give me the you whole game? You can look at the whole thing. Why you can't give me the whole game, brother? The whole thing. You're talking about you want... curve. The curve is the whole test. The, whole, the, whole... the curve ain't answer five through ten. The whole test will still show you Mahomes had three touchdowns, two picks. Joe Burrow had two touchdowns, one pick. The whole test will still work in Joe Burrow's favor. I did not want to confuse our audience. Albert Einstein, make everything as simple as possible and no simpler. So, <laughs> if the NFL play playoffs grade you on a curve, do they? then I do not care about how Joe Burrow is doing versus Joe Burrow. Oh. I don't care about oh. how the Bengals defense is doing versus the Bengals defense, because okay. that's what you showed me. Oh. You showed a classroom without a curve. Oh. But the NFL playoffs, sir, it's all about the curve. Objection, Your Honor. Contention in this courtroom right here. You in contempt. Sustain. Okay, let's talk <laughs> about it. Uh, I love you, Acho, but this ain't the NFL playoffs. This is a question where we are comparing and we are grading on a curve of Joe Burrow versus his defense. Uh Uh-oh, not Joe Burrow versus Derek Carr. That's the easy way out. That's how you like them curve tests, too. Trying to ride waves, safety net ass. Like, okay, (laughs) if I mess up, y'all going to help me out, right? You ride waves, I make waves, big dog. Never needed that damn help from the curve. Okay, let's compare Joe Burrow. Stay with me. And his defense. Now, once again, I'm a plagiarize, but it's not really plagiarism because I give him credit. My man Toons, that is on Twitter. Here's his summation, which is amazing. I love having wisdom of the crowd because people know things. Let's start out with that Raiders game. You want to keep banging on Derek Carr versus the Raiders. Up seven, Joe Burrow. Three minutes left. Uh Uh-oh. The offense can ice the game. What do they do? They go three and out. Oh, Joe Burrow. Then the Raiders drive all the way down to the nine. And the game ends on a Derek Carr interception. Go, Joe Burrow. Papa Stogie. Okay, let's go to the next game. Tennessee Titans versus the Titans. Burrow, no touchdowns. One interception. Late in the game with a chance to take the lead. (gasps) Take a bad sack, minus 10 yards and a punt. What? 
Then the defense, they intercept Tannehill as they're driving to win the game. Oh, go Joe Burrow. Another stogie. Now, let's go to the Chiefs game. All right. Burrow versus the Chiefs in the fourth quarter and overtime. 40 yards, no touchdowns, one interception, and another dropped interception. Oh, all I surmise from this, Your Honor, is all three games against Carr, Tannehill, and Mahomes, the last throws of the game were all interceptions. And guess who caught them? Not Joe Burrow. The defense. So, man, a quarterback who has regressed in the postseason, who has benefited from seven takeaways from his defense to the tune of 20 points from the defense, and the defense has been opportunistic, Your Honor, I think the case is closed. Joe Burrow versus the defense, the defense wins. The defense rests. That was a good take. That was a good take. Yay! It was not your own, and I hope you cut him some of your check. Uh, one-eighth of your check, to be exact, because this is one-eighth of the show, because there are eight blocks every show. Stop so I hope we receipts. give one-eighth of your check. <laughs> but it was a good take. Let me try to undress that take very quickly. Mm. The defense is not in position to make those game-stealing plays if not for Joe Burrow. If not for Joe Burrow, that interception would just be an interception. But instead, it's a game-stealing interception huh. because the Bengals have a lead. <laughs> If not for Joe Burrow, who was staining nine sacks against the Tennessee Titans, then those interceptions by Ryan Tannehill would be meaningless interceptions. But the Bengals, once again, have a lead. If not for Joe Burrow keeping the Bengals in the game versus the Kansas City Chiefs, taking that game into overtime, then that interception for a touch, interception in the overtime game against the Chiefs would be meaningless. But Joe Burrow goes down and scores. Thus, it is a game ceiling interception. Now, you preface this whole conversation with, they both help each other. Yeah, yeah, let's not do that. We making TV, we making good cases, we making good arguments. Yes. But they both help each other. But yes. the biggest flaw in anyone's argument who thinks there's more credit to the Bengals defense than Joe Burrow is understanding this. In the playoffs, things get harder. So the only thing that matters now mm. is that you win. In track and field at the Olympic Games, it does not matter what time you run. It is the last race. Of the la if you are running your last race, all that matters is that you win. But give it to you even better, and then I'm done. I'm done with my notes. Let's go. Marcellus knows he, this. He is a junior world record holder. That ain't how you say it. I'm a national record holder. First of all, I'm a senior. My son's a junior. I am a national record holder and national champion. Just let it go. Thank you. Thank you. What Marcellus Wiley will tell y'all if he's being truthful, and that's a rare occasion, but if he's being truthful, <laughs> yeah. what he'll tell you is this. What? When you get to the last meet, the national meet, the Olympic meet, the world juniors, whatever the case may be, time is irrelevant. Win in advance. Mm -hmm. That's the saying. Mm -hmm. It's literally just win in advance. It does not matter if you run a personal best. It does not matter if you run a season's worst. Yeah. All that matters is that you win in advance. What Joe Burrow is doing with the Bengals right now is exactly what you have to do at the biggest stage in global sports, in the biggest events, at the biggest time. Mm. Win and advance. Mm. Joe Burrow is winning and he is advancing. I do not care if he has personal bests. I do not care if he has season's best. I do not care if he has world records. I do not care what he does. He is winning and he is advancing. And to Joe Burrow, be the credit. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to slight Joe Burrow because, duh, he's the quarterback. But... <sighs> Bengals D is nice, too. Yeah, yeah there Bengals you go. Nice. Now we can agree on that and more so... They weren't always winning those games tied in the situation in the game as well. And Joe Burrow did his part. They did his part. But don't you think that some of this is just – and this is my issue with quarterbacks, how they get all the praise and also all the criticism, but we're nuanced. So we're going to actually look to where we should put the praise or the criticism. In this situation, it just reminds me of kind of like how – crazes and dance crazes are created, right? Like, dance crazes are really created in somebody's living room or on somebody's block, right? A little Taisha out there just hitting it, and you're like, what? And then, then we wait for Chris Brown to do it three years later, and they'd be like, oh, that's the Chris Brown. They're like, that's Taisha's, right? To me, it's like the defense is Taisha. they just like, we did that! We did that! And everybody's just going to Joe Burrow, oh, lighting up a stogie and watching him dance. All right, we'll see. Coming up, Packers legend Charles Woodson Woody thinks it might be time for Green Bay to move on from Aaron Rodgers. I'll tell you if we agree. That's next on Speak for Yourself. we tell you some love, man. February 20th is the most iconic day in all of motorsports. The Daytona 500. Great American Race kicks off the 2022 NASCAR season only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Let's head to Green Bay. Their season ended prematurely 
Now the question is, will Aaron Rodgers be back next season? His former teammate, our own Charles Woodson, thinks it might be time to go separate ways, saying, quote, if I'm the Packers, I'm thinking about trading Aaron Rodgers if we can. Oh, Acho, you agree with Charles Woodson that the Packers should consider trading Aaron Rodgers? No, because they shouldn't consider it. They should do it. Period. Man, the that, Packers need to trade Aaron Rodgers immediately. Okay. You can no longer be held hostage by Aaron Rodgers. Oh, really? And Aaron Rodgers is holding the Packers hostage. Trade mm. that man as soon as you possibly can. Mm. Why go another 12 months with Aaron Rodgers when you know the likely outcome, not winning a Super Bowl, then you will not get anything for Aaron Rodgers because then he will walk in free agency. Mm. Why go another 12 months with Aaron Rodgers being held hostage by the employee when you are the employer? Mm. You want to know one of the primary tells of a dysfunctional household is when the children run the household. Yeah, yeah. When the non-authoritative figure acts as the authoritarian. Mm. When the non-authoritative figure acts as the authoritative figure. I do not have to spend long in someone's house to understand how this household is probably functioning. Mm. Like I've told you before, walk into a house and hear <laughs> the, the parent ask, hey, son, daughter, what? That's all I got to hear. That's all you need. That's all I all need. I need to as know. Soon, as soon as I hear that, <laughs> what? In response to a mom or dad, I know, oh. I know who I know who yeah. running the show in this joint. Yeah. And it's not the parents. Yeah. And that's uh, why you haven't come over yet, because it's still <laughs> what, daddy. I'm like, damn, I sure ain't gonna like it. <laughs> no, so, no. man, Aaron Rodgers needs to be traded, and it's very simple. Mm. I understand that Aaron Rodgers is gaining a lot of regular season success. Mm. But Packers, understand who's really winning this relationship. Because Aaron Rodgers is winning MVP, individual award. Ooh. Aaron Rodgers will likely win again this year an MVP, individual award. But Green Bay Packers, what do y'all have to show for it? Hosting one home playoff game? Congratulations, I guess. So, yeah, go ahead and trade him. It's a must. Two. Two playoff games. Remember, the Tampa went and got him, and then this one, too. <laughs> Making your case. Um, here we go. Man, you are tripping. Uh, no, you couldn't. You can't trade Aaron Rodgers. Don't consider it. Don't even think about it. Here's a little fun fact. No NFL MVP has ever been traded after winning the MVP. Mm -hmm. Another fun fact. No NFL MVP has ever returned on another team, even through free agency in NFL history. There's been two that didn't return, and they retired. So unless Aaron Rodgers retires, he's a Green Bay Packer 2022. At least the history tells us he should be. If every MVP has returned back to that same team... It's never been done that they got traded because it never should be done. Like, it's senseless. Think about what you're giving up. And tell me a plan that's better than this. A team that sets itself up for this level of success. Not saying that this is their cap, this is their ceiling, this is their potential, but this is what they've realized. Two NFC Championship games and a number one seed with two home playoff games. Hey, bro. Like, that's what we sign up for. Now, can we do more with that? Yes, we can. But can we do more with that if Aaron Rodgers is not our quarterback? No, we can't. You just look at it, Acho. This is why also you can't concede to Aaron Rodgers in any trade conversation or demands. The Green Bay Packers as an organization, you can't live in Aaron Rodgers' emotional state. I'm going through that personally in my life right now. I tell my friends and family right now because I'm in that age with midlife crises. You know, everybody going through stuff and all the stuff that you weren't doing or were doing is adding up now. And I'm like, I told you 10, 20 years ago, but I was a preacher then. Huh? Mm -hmm. Marcellus, you goody two shoe. No, nah, dog, it's going to add up. So now I'm going through all these midlife crises around me. Right. And I tell them all this. You know me. I'm kind of heartless, but uh, keep it 100. I'm like, my yacht is too fresh to be taking in all this water. Basically, y'all messing up my dock. You know, I'm messing up my yacht. It's looking a mess because of y'all emotional states. So let me tell you this. If I'm the Green Bay Packers, don't let Aaron Rodgers' emotional state hijack your course of action. You got to set yourself up for success, not failure. Any other quarterback in this team, on this team, in this organization next year will set them up for failure more so than success. Nothing about that is wrong. Okay. What might be wrong, however, is crisis is. Is it crisis is or crisis? Crisis size. Crisis eyes. Okay, Columbia. Um, <laughs> I go to Harvard, damn it. I keep telling y'all. <laughs> I'll say it like this. Crisis. The Packers have been in this crisis. situation before. Crisis. Brett Favre. Ultimately, they had to trade Brett Favre. When they traded Brett Favre, they used that third round pick that they acquired mm. to move up in the first round of the draft to acquire 
Clay Matthews. Clay Matthews hmm. goes on to become a perennial All-Pro player, had a Hall of Fame trajectory, obviously cut short due to some injuries, left Green Bay. But Clay Matthews is what the Packers and is who the Packers used to acquire a Super Bowl shortly thereafter. Okay. So when trading Brett Favre, a Packers legend, one of the two or three greatest Packers quarterbacks of all times, you acquired Clay Matthews and ultimately acquired a Super Bowl. In my mind, maybe the same thing will happen mm. in trading Aaron Rodgers. Interesting. But we'll see. Time will tell. Yep. Coming up, bust out the boom box, baby. Yeah. 49ers <laughs> all-pro wide receiver, D. Bo Samuel, is coming not just to snatch chains, but snatch <laughs> opinion. That's next. Speak for yourself. I'm just going to tuck mine in. Debo. 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 Takes off. Inside the 10. What a run. Touchdown. Going to throw it. it. Wide open. Touchdown. 49ers. Debo. In for the touchdown. Debo. I tell you right there. What a weapon. An NFL record for rush touchdowns by a wide receiver in a single season. The All-Pro Debo Samuel. Mr. Do Everything for the 49ers. Finishing the regular season with 14 total touchdowns, including eight as a running back. D-Boy joins us right now, reminding you to try new Old Spice Gentleman's Blend deodorants and body washes crafted to be gentle on skin with ridiculously long-lasting freshness. You can buy Old Spice Gentleman's Blend in stores now. Look at me, I got another job. <laughs> Debo, welcome to speak for yourself and tell us how you're smelling. And tell us about your work with Old Spice. Hey, man, it's just a blessing to be able to work with these guys. I mean, I, the, the relationship started with me in 2019 at Ricky Premier. But uh, if you was in my if you was in my presence right now, I have a, I have a nice, long lasting, you know, what I'm saying uh, deodorant for you. Uh, you look good. You smell good. You play good. And, uh, you know, for yourself, a woman lover got to smell good as well. All right. I'm married. Yo, uh, I, I love it, Debo, but look. Uh, tell my wife. <laughs> Man, good, baby. Look, Debo, I got to cut to the chase. Not only does smelling good help you play good, but also the vibes help you play good. So we got to talk about the boombox. Yes. Big dog. Yes. Uh, how it start? You know what I'm saying? Like, who initiated the boombox walkout? Uh, DJ Cray right there um, to the right of the screen. Uh, we started it, as I look back, we started it, the Saints in 2019, when we was playing Roddy Rich when, it's, when he came out with the song in the box. And uh, it just we just did it more and just locked in this year on it. And you see it got the guys going. We was rocking out. Man, that's dope right there. He wearing earplugs? Be real. I mean, what the hell? And no. <laughs> <laughs> he, I don't know what he thinking. And, and why did the song change? So you start off Roddy Rich. Next thing you know, we playing Super Gremlin. Who controls the song oh, yeah. play and all that? Me and Swear. Trent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he threw Trent name in here. Song. <laughs> Trent going to be on your Yeah, head. me and Trent. He said <laughs> me. <laughs> he said <Trent>. me <laughs> and Trent. <laughs> All right, yeah. Hey, okay, Debo, take me back, bro, because what people don't realize, practice field, walkthroughs, most cats get to chill, right? Like walkthrough days, they just be chilling. But you play about 50, 11 positions. <laughs> and so you don't ever really get to chill on walkthrough days, bro. Talk me uh, through what life is like having to play all those positions, even during the practice week, not just games? Uh, I just knew what particular plays that I was going to get. Uh, so it really wasn't as, as hard as a lot of people think. Um, it was only like three or four runs that – that we started with and finished with, it just looked different. It's the same thing. But uh, that's what Cal and them do a really, really good job of different formations, but the play is actually the same thing. As you, If you're watching this right here, I ran this probably two or three times a game. <laughs> that's big. That's big. <laughs> you have a preference of which position you like to line up in, and we see your receiver, we see your running back, any one of them you prefer? Receiver, of course. But wow. that running back, running back is kind of easy, though. Easy. I'm listening. It's really easy. I'm listening. What's the difference to you, running back and receiver? You describe them. Uh, getting the ball initially and beating a guy. Uh, press man or off man, you just got to beat a guy. But if you're in the backfield, you hand it to me. I'm, I can see everything before it's actually happening. Hey, big dog, you talked about uh, playing all the different positions. Well, one dude who had you in all the different positions was former OC Mike McDaniel. Tell us something we don't know about the now Dolphins head coach, your former OC. 
Oh, that kind of broke my heart when I seen it. But uh, funny story before I get into that. Did you cry? That. Did you shed a tear? Nah, nah, nah. But we had a talk. Me and him had a talk that made me shed a tear. But um, just to get into this, like before the season started, he was like, you're going to be in a position to make sure your family good. If, and if you're in that position, that means I'm going to be in a better position. And we talked about that before the season started. And um, God working God working a, a lot of ways and so happen that it happens for the both of us. But um back to the coaching point, like the guy's a genius. Him and Kyle works together as a whole and just put everything together as you can see how our offense operate. And um kudos to him for getting the job it is I'm very excited for him. Now you guys had that conversation, tears shed and also how the season ended, you guys know you put yourself in prime positions to cash in. He already has, you have one year left on your deal but without talking numbers and without going through agent speak uh what you looking for in this next deal man how many commas let's talk <laughs> <laughs> man all y'all been eating me up about this man uh whew. We're going we're gonna to let, let them chips fall where they need to fall, that man. And all this chips. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of effort. Okay, let's get back to this. I got to give you this, Debo. You talk about playing wide receiver and you talk about playing running back. You may not know this about me, man, but in college I played running back and defensive end. It, it, look, you don't need to know anything about it. It wasn't that pretty. But I do know one thing from that experience is the physicality on the football field is different depending on where you line up. Talk about the physicality at the wide receiver position and juxtapose that to playing running back. In the humblest way, I'm going to ask you to turn the tape on because if when I'm in the backfield and when I'm playing wide out, it's the same treatment. Mm. What about Even the- if it's a DB or it's a linebacker. Okay. What about the way they treat you? Because uh, my man, Nick Scott, is like, you know, he got a good lick on you in the NFC Championship game. Is it different to how they treat you? Where you line up? He hit me when I wasn't looking. Oh, oh, oh you ain't never oh, seen oh, you ain't oh, you ain't you you ain't never listen. You ain't never seen a guy hit me like that when I can see him. So you ain't never been ever. caught slipping. No, well he caught me slipping when I wasn't looking. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never been caught sight slipping. Like I saw you and you never. Okay, never. So it's the same to you. I understand that, but you're saying even in response to what they're trying to do, it still feels the same, huh? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Hey, would you say you're the most physical player on offense in the league? You or George Kittle? Who more physical on that team? Mm. See, I, we get into this all the time. Ooh. I ain't going to lie. I say, I'm going to give it to George because he be flatlining the ends. I ain't, I ain't flatlining <laughs> no the end. <laughs> right, right, right. Give me this. Give me this. We need your, your opinion on this game right here because uh, you faced Jalen Ramsey three times this year. He going against Jamar Chase. That's locker room talk. Who you think got the edge in that matchup? Ramsey, Chase. That boy won a dog. That boy Chase is a monster. Ramsey a monster. I'm like five nice too now. Yeah, five for sure nice. The world know that. And the world know the player that won becoming as well. I, I, I'm, I'm ready to see this matchup, but it ain't going to be no matchup if they can't block him. <laughs> mm, there you go. All right. <laughs> Oh, no, no, you ain't getting off the hook, Acho. <laughs> Acho. All right, so who you got in the Super Bowl then since you said they both I'm, monsters, they both dogs? I'm rocking got? with the Rams on this one. Because? If you can't block them, you can't beat them. Hey, if the Titans want- sack you nine times, mm. what you think Aaron Donald the boys going to do? Mm. Mm. Hey, and not saying the know- Titans is, is, is weak at all. No, not, not, not at all. But you got, <laughs> so, you got the monsters out there on the Rams defense. Hey, how hard, bro, is it having to play a team three times? Because I know cats don't realize, like, it's hard to beat a team twice. But now when you got to play a team for the third time, how difficult can it be? How difficult can it be beating them six times? Ooh, ooh. Well, we're seven at then, since you want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but no, nah, but no, nah, on, on a serious note. Emo, I got to deal with this every day. But on a, <laughs> but on a serious note, though, like, that was the yeah. – they, they they had a really good plan. Like, that was the best that I've seen the Rams play anybody mm-hmm. for is the start to finish, how physical they was, the game plan that they had. They had a great scheme for us, um, and, we, and we tend to struggle with it. But um, they, 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 they made the best of every opportunity they had. They converted a lot on third down. They, they, they had a pretty good game, and kudos to them. I mean, they got the job done. They did. Okay, let's be real. Let's, mm. let's be real now. I went on Twitter, 
defending Jimmy G because he a winner and all he do is win. Statistically, the numbers may not be crazy, but the dude gets the job done. Then you went on Twitter defending your boy Jimmy G, saying that he's a winner. What you got to say on national television about Jimmy G, man? All right, I'm just, I'm just keep, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna just keep it real. We can take it back to the to the Titans game when Jimmy G hurt his thumb. Mm-hmm. Remember, he already got a shoulder issue. Mm-hmm. The guy come back a week after hurting his thumb, almost got to have surgery. Mm-hmm. The man can barely grip the football, but come back and have the season that we needed him to have in order to put us in a position to win. Remind you, he can barely grip the ball. He got a shoulder injury. That's why I respect Jimmy. A hundred percent. Don't nobody know what the guy really go through. So you just think about that as a quarterback not being able to use your thumb the way you need to use it. And you got a, sh- a right shoulder injury and still play the way you play. That, that, that's all I need to see. That's facts. OK, what do you mm. respond to people to say Jimmy G is just go just goes along for the ride? Like Jimmy G ain't really doing nothing on the Niners offense. It's Kittle. It's Debo. It's Ayuk. Jimmy G's just going along for the ride. He's not actually helping the success. What you respond to that? Okay, um, I'm going to take it back to the two-minute drive against the Rams uh, the second time we played them. Or I can take it back to him putting us in a position to win against the Packers in a home game, but then they come back and score three points in, in 30 seconds. I mean, I could I could go on forever about people saying Jimmy this, Jimmy that. It's, it's not all bad. Okay, let's keep with this theme. What do you say to people that says, Jimmy G, it was amazing, it was great having you, but it's Trey Lance time. <laughs> What do you say to those people? I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. Try and bob and weave this one, boy. I mean, I ain't bobbing and weaving it. I mean, I feel like like I was stated earlier, uh, if, if we would have went to the Super Bowl and Jimmy would have won it, it would have been a, a, a different conversation. That's a good point. Mm. That's a good point. That's a good point. I was saying it would have been it would have been different. It would have been different pressure of, yeah. of all right. What are you going to do now? You feel what I'm saying? Uh, but now that we didn't make it, I mean, it's it's an easier situation with you drafting the guy at pick three. And for me personally, and for me personally, I feel like Jimmy was a great mentor and a great leader to Trey. And once Trey get all the things that it takes to be a pro, I feel like me personally, he can be a superstar in this league. Mm. Take me one more layer about Trey Lance, because I call him one play Trey because it seemed like I only saw him play one play this year because of Jimmy G doing his thing. But what is Trey Lance in terms of a quarterback? Uh, He's young, of course, Uh, but with, with, with time come greatness, um, as you can see from my rookie year to to I am now. With time come greatness, with an off season, with a great off season, a real off season for you to focus on your mechanics, the things that you know you need to work on. It it, it takes you a long way, and I give all the credit to Wes Welker for sitting me down and you know what I'm saying building a plan about how to be the player that he knew I could be. So I feel like Kyle is doing that for Trey, and I feel like Trey will be be ready come camp. Hey, with time come greatness, and how come you got great so fast? <laughs> Take that much time. Make that make sense. <laughs> yeah, you see, that sound good. That's a T-shirt. Yeah. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Not at all. But uh, I can just take it back to after 2019, uh, the offseason that I was having, and then fell up short and breaking my ankle. So I was on the path to being this guy last year but got hurt so i just used that as more fuel to build up and just get ready for this year but now i got more fuel built up from you what what hurt the most is not too many people think about this but we didn't make the playoffs in 2020 so from february until we could have week and a half ago you're just thinking about dang all this work i put in for 10 11 months and come up short that's what i was really upset about i really really upset about the loss it's about what we went through as a team what you went through as a player in the off season together and fall up short from three and five to the nsc championship that's what really hurt the most Debo, i got one more for you because you keep it real you keep it more real than anybody we've ever talked to on this show all pro season this year I don't know, 15, 1,600 total yards, something ridiculous. Would you rather have had that season, even though you came up short, or not had this season and been playing in the game on Sunday? I'd rather be playing in this game on Sunday because I don't think, like I stated, when we, when we got in the run, nobody wanted to see us in the playoffs, mm. and it showed. Because mm. a lot of people was talking about, all right, we got to prepare for how physical this team is. It don't, you can't prepare for what we're going to do to you in a week. Mm. 
Ooh, that's I respect I that. You know what? That's the right answer. I said the same thing. Yeah, and we usually disagree on that. But he got one more year on his deal. Next year, you ask that same question. He talked about that money. He better ball out like he did this year. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Debo. That was the right answer right for now. For sure. Another, right, we appreciate it, man. Enjoy appreciate it. Off-season for baller. Sure. Coming up, Thank quarterbacks you, can't become a superhero in the Super Bowl, but they need reliable sidekicks. We'll tell you who stands out. That's next on Speak for Yourself. <laughs> Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. We're just four days away from Super Bowl 56. I still got tickets, too. Hook me up, big dog. All right, let's get it going. You know, all know real superheroes like ourselves uh, will be Sunday as two star quarterbacks face off. But as we all know, every superhero needs a sidekick. Mm-hmm. Who's the superhero here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a superhero. All right, so Acho, give me your top three sidekicks for Joe Burrow Sunday. Man, top three sidekicks, top three most important players outside of Joe Burrow. Number three, the running back, Joe Mixon. Mm. Joe Mixon averaging 98.7 yards per scrimmage. But what I need from Joe Mixon, I need 125 scrimmage yards on Sunday. If the Bengals are going to have a chance, Joe Mixon is going to have to go crazy. Joe Mixon is going to have to do something that he hasn't done this postseason, but he did do it three to four times in the regular season. Joe Mixon has to help Joe Burrow out. Aaron Donald's out there. Von Miller's out there. Leonard Ford's out there. The pass rush for the Rams is going to be crazy. Yes. Joe Mixon, can you alleviate some pressure from Joe Burrow? Don't let the Rams hunt. Don't let Von Miller know that every time it's about to be a pass, yeah. Joe Mixon takes some pressure off. Let's go. Number two, sidekick, Trey Hendrickson. No, you're going defense Got now, huh? a little bit of defense. Yeah, Defensive man. end. Now, the dude goes out there with no gloves. I don't know why nor how he does it. But dude goes out there with no gloves, had 14 sacks this season. Damn. Two and a half sacks the last two postseason games. Mm-hmm. What Trey Hendrickson must do if the Bengals want to win. I need a sack, but more importantly, I need a forced fumble that they recover. Bengals got to find a way to steal possessions. You know Matthew Stafford is going to try to light you up. Cooper Cup, Odell Beckham, they're going to try to get hot. They're going to try to get going. Mm -hmm. Somehow the Bengals need to find a way to turn this team over. I do not see Matthew Stafford throwing a pick. He's had six touchdowns in the postseason. Let's go. Only one pick in the postseason. Uh. I do not see Matthew Stafford making some sort of egregious error while the ball is in flight. So Trey Henderson has to get to Matthew Stafford before the ball ever gets in flight. That was a layer there. Force fumble. I need that from him. Smart. Smart. Number one sidekick, that one's pretty obvious. Debo Samuel just came on the show and told us mm. the number one sidekick <laughs> has number one on his jersey. Mm. Jamar Chase, who is a dude. 93 yards per game this postseason. We know what he did in the regular season. Set just about every Bengals regular season record. He goes crazy. <clears throat> He's a big-time player in the biggest moments. Him and Joe Burrow, for those that don't know, teammates in college. Mm. Set just about every record record in college. Jamar Chase won the Belentikoff Award in college Woo! with one year left. Yeah. He sat out his final year. Belentikoff Award is the award for the best receiver in college football. Can Jamar Chase prove himself to be the best receiver in the NFL on Sunday? Doesn't matter what you do the entirety yeah. of the season. It doesn't matter what you've done the entirety of the season. What will you do on Sunday? Chase has to be Burrow's biggest side. Yeah, and he's going against the best cornerback in the NFL. Not just on Sunday, on any given any Sunday. Given one. And that's Jalen Ramsey. We asked Debo, want to hear what you think. In that matchup, who gets the edge? He really didn't give us an answer, though. And you sound like you're not going to either. Can you oh, answer? Oh, <laughs> you asking me who's giving uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Jaylen Debo. Ramsey. Who? Dude, dude who let his mouth Say it again louder. Jalen Ramsey. Oh, so your number one sidekick has no chance, you just said. He has a chance. <laughs> Mike Evans caught Jalen Ramsey slipping. Tom Brady's True. last True. touchdown of his career yes. came on Jalen Ramsey yes. to Mike Evans. Mm. So he can get caught slipping. Yeah. It's just not like and, and Tom Brady's first touchdown of his career against me against my Chargers. All right, let's get to my top Super Bowl sidekicks for Matthew Stafford. You said a couple of them because it's pretty obvious. Let's start off with the one you didn't say. Cam Akers. And for the same reasons you said Joe Mixon. I need the Cam Akers I saw in the first round, in the wild card round against the Arizona Cardinals. This dude is amazing. I call him the Bionic Man. How you gonna tear your Achilles, which I've done, in the same season and come back and perform at a high level in that same season? But You got to make sure that this offense has balance. We know Matthew Stafford's going to ball. We know that they have a vaunted passing attack. But Cam Akers, show up, man. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they can't tee off on your quarterback. Let's go with number two. Who is it? My daughter's favorite athlete. Yes, Odell Beckham Jr., man. Helmet on, helmet off. The boy's pretty out there. He makes plays as well. Just came into this offense, inserted in this offense, and made sure that he made an impact on this offense. All of that Cleveland talk is behind him. We're talking now. Is Odell reminded us of young Odell, the New York Giants version, 
but on the team that's actually winning. Odell, huge impact. Got to see it. Number one, Captain Obvious right here. Cobra Cup? Oh, uh, you think? Cooper so Cup. you got no defense? Okay, keep going. What keep do you mean no defense? Going. First of all, we had that discussion earlier, and you told me that it was all Joe Burrow, no defense. And then I see your picks, and there's a defender on there. Matthew Stafford doesn't need his defense. He's performing at such a high level in this postseason. All he needs is a balanced attack and the guys to be who they are. As Coach says in big moments, I don't need you to be bigger. Just be who you are. Matthew Stafford, get those sidekicks in order, and the Rams will have some success. But even if the Rams do do all of this, they and Cooper that. Cup do balls, that. and Odell Beckham do balls, do and Cam Akers balls, eventually Aaron Donald's going to have to make a play. Von, Leonard Floyd, Ramsey, because this can all be undermined if Jalen Ramsey does not stop Jamar Chase, do you not think? Well, if you look at it, the Rams, they score two times 30-plus points in this postseason mm -hmm. alone. So they're going to put up points. When you look at the Cincinnati Bengals, oh, they're going to put up the same amount of points. That puts pressure on you guys. You, I think the defense is going to be bonus. It's going to be supplementing what they are going to do offensively because if they are able to put pressure on the Bengals, they can out-talent the Bengals. They can outscore the Bengals. The defense is going to be there. And if you look at the defense, especially in terms of sacks, what they had, two and a half sacks this postseason? Not exactly between Aaron Donald, Von Miller, not exactly tearing up the quarterbacks, but obviously applying pressure. I don't think there's going to be some defensive struggle. I think this is going to be about the wattage on the scoreboard. Lighten it up. Do you think the Rams will lean into Cam Akers at all or in a game in which Sean McVay is already passing heavy? Yeah. Matthew Stafford, the quarterback, we know how great he is. You got Cooper Cup, you got Odell Beckham, you got Ben Jefferson. Do you think that Cam Akers will be a focal point? I think he will. Uh, the Arizona game, first game for Matthew Stafford as a Rams quarterback in the playoffs. They use Cam Akers. Big pass play from Odell Beckham Jr. Almost 100 rushing yards. You saw him explosive. But then he had to go play Tampa. Then you got to play San Francisco. You're not running the ball on those teams. You got to get the numbers up in quantity, but the quality of those reps obviously is going to go down. Against the Bengals, may have a chance. We'll see. Coming up, Matthew Stafford is a win away from a Super Bowl title. We'll tell you if he's already lived up to the trade that brought him to L.A. That's next on Speak for Yourself. Where'd that defender come from, Acho? I thought you said that. Well, the Rams traded two first-rounders, a third, and Jared Goff to bring Matthew Stafford to L.A. Now, that was a couple months ago. Now, several months later, they're one win away from a Super Bowl title. Well, our very own Troy Aikman said of the big trade, Stafford has, quote, lived up to it, close quote. Can't wait to dialogue this one with you, Sal. Shall we? Has Matthew Stafford already lived up to the trade? No, he has not. Troy, who is uh, usually right, is wrong on this one. But, hey, nobody bats a thousand, right? Let's get to this one right here. Two firsts and a third. See, you said that in your opening. And I think people are desensitized to what two firsts and a third really look like. Sometimes you watch the news and you hear some of the things that go on around this world and you hear the numbers and you just don't feel it, right? It doesn't really hit you. Well, let me tell you what two firsts and a third are. Two Aaron Donalds and a Cooper Cup. Ah, because there are two first rounders and the third rounder. Now, if you draft in those rounds, will you get those same type of players? No. But if you get any semblance of what that is and potential, that's what two firsts and the third look like. Now, I ask you, Matthew Stafford, you come to Los Angeles after we get rid of Jared Goff. Obviously, you're a better version of quarterback than Jared Goff. Obviously, you're better than Jared Goff, right? But we're not going to get better results. And we gave up potentially two Aaron Donalds and a Cooper Cup for you? Stop it. As Heller will say, um, you wear those red bottoms so people can see the red bottom, right? You got... Going to give up all of that, spend all of that on something. And I know you, Acho, look at you flexing right now with the watch, with the suit. You're not going to have all that on and not expect one compliment, not one post, not one person liking it. So, hey, if you're better than Jared Goff, guess what? Prove it. You got to do better than Jared Goff. So Matthew Stafford has not lived up to the trade just yet until he eclipses what he was traded for. I like what you said. Don't like how you said it. Uh, Matthew Stafford has absolutely lived up to the trade. Absolutely. We have to look at where Matthew Stafford has taken these Rams. Matthew Stafford in year one with the Rams is already in a Super Bowl. Jared Goff in four years with the Rams went to a Super Bowl. Mm. So Jared Goff's ceiling with the Rams was a Super Bowl appearance. And it appears that Matthew Stafford's floor with the Rams is a Super Bowl appearance. It took Goff two years with Sean McVay to get to where Matthew Stafford got in just one year. Matthew Stafford has been the reason 
the Rams are in the Super Bowl. Jared Goff mm. just went along with the ride to the Super Bowl. Remember, Matthew Stafford, six touchdowns, just one interception in these playoffs thus far. Matthew Stafford has gotten better than he was in the regular season. Facts. And in the regular season, Matthew Stafford was already an MVP candidate. Would it be a cherry on top of this incredible Sunday if the Rams win the Super Bowl, beyond the shadow of a doubt. But even if the Rams do not win the Super Bowl, Stafford has already lived up to the reason that they brought him here. Did you intend to say that? Because that was powerful. Cherry on top of this incredible Sunday? Sunday? Not like with you. Sunday? This Sunday? Woo, that boy's special. I knew I knew I knew that dude special. You're wrong. Um, let's talk about why you're wrong. Um, you ever heard of Craig Morton? Isn't that Morton's take? The, the, first of all, yeah, exactly. Me either. I ain't never heard no Craig Morton. <laughs> Respect. Daryl LaMonica, anybody? No, Starting to get a little familiar? No, me either. Oh, I'm just naming quarterbacks that have been traded to teams, went to the Super Bowl and lost. Ah, <laughs> you got my point, huh? <sighs> we're not going to forget Matthew Stafford, and that's going to be the problem. We're not going to forget you. You were traded for two Aaron Donalds and a Cooper Cup. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's okay. Just go out there and appear in the Super Bowl and lose it. We're fine with that. We have more years with you. I understand what Troy is saying. He's suggesting that the reality is, because you have Matthew Stafford, you're going to have him for years, that this opportunity may present itself once again. But you reminded me in the A block yeah. not to think like that, Agreed, right? Yes, so if we're not thinking like that and we're thinking in a finite vacuum, guess what you need to do, Matthew Stafford? Win this Super Bowl. There have been quarterbacks that we don't think are great, that have won the Super Bowl. Nick Foles always comes to mind, and you always say, hey, in the sample size that's small enough, Nick Foles is amazing. But he's not thought of as an all-time great. Jeff Hostetler, my man Mark Rippian, et cetera, right? They won the Super Bowl. If you're Matthew Stafford, you don't want to hear the list of those who have lost the Super Bowl and what they're thought of. It's even worse than that. So, Matthew Stafford, you were brought here for one reason. They spent all of that money for one reason, to get something out of it. And if you don't give them what they want, was it really worth it? Well, so the question is what what they really want what from they want Stafford. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it was Matthew <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> We're going to get caught. I can't say it without cursing. Aaron. <laughs> oh, BJ. Okay, look. Even if that trade oh, for two first-rounders and, and a third-rounder could have gotten you a Cooper, two Aaron Donalds and a Cooper Cup, I mean, keep in mind the Rams already have that. Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, and Cooper Cup. Sounds like <laughs> two Aaron Donalds and a Cooper Cup to me. And with Aaron Same. Donald, with Jalen Ramsey, and with Cooper Cup, this Rams team was one and done, or you could say two and done in last year's playoffs. Uh -huh. So the Rams already have seen what two first-rounders and a third-rounder can get you. Best-case scenario, it will land you a Jalen Ramsey, generational talent, maybe best quarterback of the generation, mm. Aaron Donald, a generational talent, maybe best defensive tackle in the history of the NFL, but clearly of this generation. And Cooper Cup, a generational talent, maybe best wide receiver of the last five years, at least statistically speaking. So two first rounds and a third, best case scenario, get you what the Rams already had and not to a Super Bowl. Hmm. So Matthew Stafford has already said, look, even if y'all were to keep those two first and a third, Y'all still weren't going to get where I done got you, at least not as consistently as I've got you here, because you said nobody can bat a thousand in reference to Troy Aikman. Stafford has thus far, as far as being with the Rams and going to Super Bowls, that's batting a thousand. Jared Goff, not so much. Jared Goff was Sean McVay one for four. So when I look at Stafford versus Jared Goff and that comparison, if you shall, hmm. look at Stafford in the playoffs. <laughs> oh, <Three and> 0. <laughs> completion percentage, 72, 300 yards a game, passing touchdowns where they at. Look at and keep that full screen up there because Jared Goff in five playoff games with the Rams compared to Matthew Stafford in three still has half the amount of touchdowns and obviously more interceptions. But passer rating is atrocious compared to Stafford. Goff was going along for the ride, if you will. Yeah. Matthew Stafford is dictating the ride. So for that reason, Stafford's done all that needs to be done. You're right, except at the end, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. He's way better than Jared Goff. Okay. And you're not going to give me any different result? Like, oh, oh next year. We're going to play that but game? is this oh, not different? The why fact is this that different? We instantly went to the – because let, let, just stay on my first take of Jared Goff's ceiling is a Super Bowl, Matthew Stafford's floor is a Super Bowl. Yeah. That, to me, is why it's different. Yeah. As bad as it's ever been with yeah. Matthew Stafford and the Rams, mm -hmm. it's a Super Bowl.
Yeah. But as bad as it ever was with Jared Goff and the Rams was nine and seven, no playoffs. If I'm with Sean McVay and Jared Goff and the Rams was nine and seven, no playoffs. If I am not mistaken, so Stafford, <laughs> yo, if this is as bad as it gets, oh, it's all good. But it's never as bad as it gets in terms of saying that because reality will intercept that and change it. Mm-hmm. Remember Patrick Mahomes was in the dynasty? Remember when Patrick Mahomes had his floor as the AFC Championship game, then it changed in floor to, oh, no, we have another level of Super Bowl appearances. Then it's like, no, let's go back down to AFC Championship game. You know what changed it? Years. You know what changed it? Performances. You know what changed it? The fact that the reality is different than what we suggest it to be. Right now we're projecting. So we're projecting for this game. He needs to win this game because the projections will change, certainly. The only thing that's certain about the NFL is uncertainty, right? Next year, somebody gets hurt. Next year, somebody doesn't perform up to standard. Next year, the schedule's different. Next year, you get caught up in the wrong seat, and then it's like, damn, we got to play. Like the Dallas Cowboys come to mind. Like the Dallas Cowboys are feeling good about themselves in the playoffs, and they're like, oh, who we got to play? Huh? What do you say? What? For Atlanta. Even Green Bay, like, huh? We got a week off to play who? For Atlanta? Like, <laughs> Debo came on and talked about it. And it's just sometimes you get caught up with the wrong matchup because styles make fights. I'm looking at this as like, that's a setup for success because you got a better quarterback. But it's also a setup for failure because with the better quarterback should be better results. You come back after this game and it's like, hey, I performed well, but we came up short. Sean McVay is 0-2. All of a sudden, people are like, okay, we brought you here. You did amazing. We can't really trip on you. But our alternator didn't kick in. You know, when your battery goes dead, your alternator is supposed to kick in, right? Well, something needs to kick in for Matthew Stafford, whether it's his performance or not, for this team to get the victory. They're the better team. They're favored to win. They have the better coach. Matter of fact, their coach used to be the other coach's boss. Like, there's nowhere you really look and you say that the edge goes to the Bengals. So why shouldn't the Rams win? I I think the Rams should win, but I think this even more so. If before the season somebody said, hey, we're going to give up two firsts and a third for Matthew Stafford, but at a minimum, I guarantee you will be in the Super Bowl. Would you make that trade? Oh, man, give me the pen. Let me write my name Ten times out of ten. If I said, look, we're going to trade two firsts and a third for Matthew Stafford, I can't guarantee you how long he'll play. I can't guarantee you the success for years to come, but I can guarantee you this and only this. The first year we get him, we will be in a Super Bowl. Mm. I still think you take that deal. Yeah, he might retire one year. He could get hurt. Something could happen. But you give up two firsts and a third just for a 50-50 shot at a Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford's given these Rams a 50-50 shot at a Super Bowl. The objective of making a trade like this, which the Washington Commodores did when they tried to get Robert Griffin. The who? What are they? The Carolina Commodores? A lot of Richie play for. (laughs) (laughs) Hello? Just be be happy. I I didn't say the foreman. I put out a lot of (laughs) crises. Hey, hey, Daniel Snyder, get this dude. You call him the Washington Commodores. And during Black History Month, you can't call that team the Commodores. <laughs> okay, that was a moment. You were yeah, you were brought into it. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what you were trying to say or sing, I but mean, the difference between Commodore and Commander is one letter. <laughs> huh? It's just, I'm lost. it's just the N, right? <laughs> the <laughs> Commodores. The <laughs> best. That's the best. Oh, unintentional jokes. Okay, I'm listening. You have nothing. Huh? You can't talk. Can you talk? You have a point talking about the Lionel Richie? <laughs> okay. I have a, no point either. <laughs> Speaking of Matthew Stafford and the Super Bowl, woo! Ah, Terry Bradshaw still has plenty of money to give away, so Fox Bet Super 6 is running. Stack the cash, man. Damn. One more time, the last two jackpots surpassed $325,000, and they want you to make this one even bigger. Scan the QR code. Get it together, Wally. Download the Super 6 app and enter your picks in the Super Bowl contest for your chance to win. And invite your friends, too, because the more people who enter, the bigger the jackpot gets. Coming up... The Rams and Bengals both have big-time talent with their skill position players, but we're picking which team has the best. Maybe it's the Commodores with Lionel Richie. Why do they keep changing their name, bro? It's not my fault, man. 
Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow both have a lot of talent to work with in the Super Bowl. Cooper Cup and Odell Beckham Jr. are the standouts for the Rams' skill position players. On the other side, Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon are big options for Cincinnati. So, Acho, who has better skill position players? Rams, Bengals. Bengals, but you got to look at the depth, man. At the top layer, uh, the skill position competition is equal. Odell Beckham, Cesar T. Higgins, Cooper Cup, uh, Jamar Chase, Uzoma, Cesar Higby. But when you start to get beneath the surface, as great as Cam Akers is, particularly coming back from an Achilles tear so soon, Cam Akers can't touch Joe Mixon, not right now, not in totality. The two running backs, Joe Mixon is <clears throat> leaps and bounds ahead of Cam Akers, in large part because Cam Akers has not maximized his potential yet coming off the injury. But Joe Mixon's skill set is ridiculous. A pass catcher at the backfield, Mm. breakaway speed, also has power, vision, balance. Joe Mixon truly the total package at the running back position. Then you got to look even deeper at the wide receiver positions because when you start to look at Tyler Boyd for the Bengals versus Van Jefferson for the Rams, you realize, oh, wait, the Bengals have a better third receiver than the Rams' third receiver in football. And you know this sell better than most, but audience, let me let y'all in on game. We could easily as a defense take away your first option. We just call a a simple Mm -hmm. call one star. One star means, hey, cover one for everybody, double team the star player. Mm -hmm. We might hit you with a one double. One double means, hey, man, everybody, we going to double team the best two players. Ain't no option for one triple. You run out of defenders. So at the point in which we know we're going to call one star the duration of the game, so we're going to go ahead and double team Cooper Cup. On money downs, we might rest around and hit you with a one double. Double team Cooper Cup, double team Odell Beckham. Now Van Jefferson has to win. Okay. You know for certain what the Rams are going to do. They probably won't have to call one star on Jamar Chase. Probably just, hey, Jalen Ramsey, you take out Jamar Chase. So what they might mess around and do is call a one star, if you will, send that star to T. Higgins. Well, now, Boyd, you got to win. But Boyd has won to the degree of 850 yards over the course of the regular season. So you know he's capable. Here's what I left out. If you do mess around and call a one double or a one star, now Joe Mixon is one-on-one with a linebacker. And the Rams' biggest weakness on defense is at the linebacker position. It's not at the pass rushing position, clearly not in the secondary with Ramsey, maybe at the safety position, if you will, but it's at that linebacker position. So the better skill positions are on the Bengals, not because of the star players. We know about Odell, we know about Cup, we know about Chase, we know about T, but let's talk about that depth. Let's talk about the unsung heroes of the Super Bowl. You know why we don't talk about depth? Because it doesn't matter as much as the top layer. You know what I'm saying? And so let's stay at the top layer. Let's just see what's on the surface before we even go deeper than that. Because we probably don't need to go deeper than that. Uh, what was that defense you kept calling? One double? One double. One, one double? Yeah. Been in and out, huh? <laughs> take, take two double doubles. Uh, oh, I love one double when it goes against this Rams offense. Because then Odell against San Francisco goes for 9 one thirteen. <laughs> Oh, one double. No, no. Cooper goes for 11, 142. What? We're having a one double. Oh, it ain't working, coach. We in trouble. So let's talk about this. Just simply, which offense is more productive? Which offense is better? Rams or Bengals? Rams. Rams. All right, that's one. I'm going to play some spades on your head. Count these books right. <laughs> All right, uh, Matthew Stafford or Joe Burrow? Man, don't you dare waste our airtime on this. I got to go Burrow, and I'm not lying. You're going brand. That's going brand. You know damn well. Okay, Stafford. It's a toss-up, but I would go Burrow, but Stafford. It's a toss-up. They don't land at the same time. All right, toss up. Oh, here goes Matthew Stafford. All right, that's two. Okay. You want a tie for that one? Oh, wow. Cooper Cup or Jamar Chase? You, I'm talking about production. I ain't talking about how great they can be. Oh, what they mama think. I'm talking about who was better. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Oh, that's three. How many books you say? You said board. <laughs> you said board. You lied. Uh, uh, OBJ or Mr. Higgins? And in, I like you. In namesake, OBJ. But in production, Higgins is nice, too. Oh, Higgins had 9, 113. Anyway. Okay. Um, anyway. Uh, Higby, Uzama. Uzoma? But I mean, I say. Why is no, Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, dog, hell, you, you faking these books. So far, you have not said one thing for the bangles, as you say. Now, I'm going to give you this one. Joe Mixon. Yeah, yeah. Course, duh, duh, duh. Um... I don't see where you get it from. Like, now we're going to go make up that difference by guys who don't really play or are really counted on? You can't add it up like that, big dog. Count your books 
properly. I feel you on counting the books, but you're playing the wrong game. Because when you play a game called Uno, you know what they give you. They give you them draw fours. Yeah. And if you play a Joe Mixon right there, he counts it more than just one book, big dog. So make sure you're playing the right game. I like it. I like I'll say it like this. I, I think like. the Bengals have the best skill positions, at least they've proven to in the National Football League, when you talk top to bottom. Mm. Because the Bengals had three receivers with 800-plus receiving yards. Facts. So the Bengals not just have the talent at the top shelf, they have depth across the board. But then when you also add in the fact of the Bengals can mess around and depend on the run if they have to, Joe mm. Mixon, Bengals can mess around and depend on the pass if they need to, mm. Joe Burrow. With the Bengals, however you want it, they're going to give it to you, Big. Like, it, you truly cannot game plan the Bengals. Oh. You can try to game plan the Rams. Why does Cooper Cup get busy statistically? Because Cooper Cup's in the slot. Mm. Slot receiver's a harder guy to double. For starters, the slot receiver can motion with <laughs> much more ease. Robert Woods! So, exactly right. <laughs> so if the slot receiver's just a harder guy to double, okay. as, as opposed to the outside receivers. But the Bengals pick your poison. Do your point. thing with Jamar Chase. Oh. D. Higgins going to get you. Oh, Do your thing with Chase and Higgins. Yeah. Mixon going to get you. Mm. I'm still not certain <clears throat> if you had to depend on Cam Akers to win the game, meaning go out there and run it 22 to 25 times. I'm not certain that Cam Akers physically, just off nature of his body taking that toll, can get it done. And I'm not sure that Cam Akers statistically can get it done. Cam Akers a dog. We saw him run over Buda Baker, my favorite defender. We saw him do that. <laughs> Buda, uh, thankfully, Buda, 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 Buda Baker is okay, but yeah, we saw him put Buda Baker to sleep. Buda, so I know Cam Akers a dog now, but Joe Mixon a different type of beast. Different type of beast, like Sean McVay. You know we playing chess. You know football ain't nothing but human chess. That's it. And who's the chess master out of these two? Ooh, ooh Sean. Man, count your books, dog. That's another one for the Rams. You play that new Uno with the blank card and the card you can write on. I hate it. They don't need to remix Uno. Leave yeah. Uno and Taboo alone. Great points, but they do. The only one they leave alone is Connect 4 because you can't go Connect 5. It's just too much. It's too weird. All right. Now I got to cut your argument down. I I've learned after, what, 20-plus years in the game that I, I got to make my points first. Marcellus, you get caught up in just being competitive and want to just go at Acho first instead of just go for Marcellus first. So I went for me. Now I'm about to come get you. Um, who's playing better this postseason, Matthew Stafford or Joe Burrow? Stafford. Okay. Is Joe Burrow playing better in the postseason or in his regular season? Regular season. So he's in regression. Okay, count your books. Um, Jamar Chase, his receiving yards have went down every single game this postseason. I hate to do this. 116, first game. Wow. Okay. 109. Okay, still over 100. What's up, big dog? 54. Anybody notice that? 54? No. And you talking about they can't run one double? <laughs> they might run one single on that. Oh, uh, let's talk about this. Joe Burrow coming off of his lowest completion percentage and passer rating since week 13. I remember whatever. Joe Mixon hasn't had a 100-yard rushing game since week 12. Anybody? You finished counting the books? Looks like Acho. You said Bengals, but you really felt it with your heart. It was the Rams. Well, no, I just we have to also be cognizant of what's going on and who they're playing against. Here's okay. what we know. Okay. The AFC has much better defenses than the NFC. Mm -hmm. Like what we know top to bottom. Think, just think Players. about this. I have to think about this for a second. <laughs> All right. The NFC coaches that were in the playoffs, Eagles were the seventh seed. Nick Sirianni, offensive mind. Uh, you have the San Francisco 49ers were the sixth seed. Kyle Shanahan, offensive mind. Mm -hmm. I believe you have the Arizona Cardinals were the five seed. <laughs> Uh, Cliff Kingsbury, offensive mind. Four seed, Rams. McVay, offensive mind. Three seed, Cowboys. McCarthy, offensive mind. Damn. Two seed, Arians, offensive mind. One seed, LaFleur, Packers, offensive mind. AFC different. Yeah. One seed, Tennessee Titans. Mm -hmm. Mike Vrabel, defensive mind. You mess around. Uh, you start going through the AFC and who they had. The Buffalo Bills, I believe, were the three seed. Defensive mind. Bill Belichick. Defensive mind. Chiefs, obviously, you have your Andy Reeves in there, but the AFC just more predicated on defense. So mm. we have to be cautious of looking at regular <clears throat> season and saying, oh, well, Matthew Stafford's a better player. Got to be cautious of looking at postseason and mm. saying, uh oh, uh, uh, Matthew Stafford, a better postseason, because who Joe Burrow had to go against was Mike Vrabel, who was coached by the best defensive mind of all time in Bill Belichick, and who coached with the best defensive mind of all time in Bill Great Belichick. Point. It's just different levels mm -hmm. of defense, literally, uh, and different levels of defense yeah. that I'm giving you. How about just team in terms of – I always use the Pro Bowl for this indicator, nothing else but this indicator. We're the talent at in the NFL this year. And you know that the AFC has won six consecutive Pro Bowls? Yeah, I think it's the number six. That's never happened in Pro Bowl history in terms of one conference having that type of streak. So, yeah, talent abundant in the AFC. All that said, I'm still looking at these books. 
when the Bengals gonna play one. <laughs> Coming up is Tom Brady really retired. Former Patriot. Uh-oh. He thinks he wants to play for the 49ers. We'll tell you if we're buying that. That's next. Brady ain't done. Don't speak for yourself. Tom Brady recently said, quote, never say never. <laughs> on the potential of returning from retirement. Well, Brady is from the Bay Area, and former Patriot Scott Zolich thinks joining the 49ers is what Brady's focused on, adding, quote, Trey Lance isn't ready, and he knows that team is built to win now, close quote. So, Sal, are you buying that Tom Brady is focused on a trade to the Niners? I'm buying it. I hope that Tom Brady is selling it. Now, let me just get out why I am a little hesitant to buy into this. One, I can't be this right. Like, I nailed it. I told y'all Tom Brady wasn't retiring when Tom Brady said he was retiring. Uh, it wasn't me being a contrarian. It was just like, dog, I played 10 years professionally, 25 years in the game. And when you wrestle that monster, let's just say it doesn't tap easily. Mm -hmm. I knew I was done, one, because I was that close to the bottom in terms of what my potential and talent was. I was just eroded. But two, I was like, man, I don't want to go to another situation. And what if it doesn't work out? That's what I think may keep Tom Brady retired. Think about if he goes to the San Francisco 49ers. Expectations high. Obviously, they were in the Super Bowl with Jimmy G. Kind of the same expectations for the Rams. We went to the Super Bowl with Jerry Goff. Come on, Matthew Stafford. Take us over the hump. We went to the Super Bowl with Jimmy G. Come on, Tom Brady. Take us over the hump. But what if Tom Brady takes his time getting acclimated? What if he goes out there and then the team is 7-5? and five? And you're seven and five, and you've already forgotten what down it was. Kind of year one, Tampa Bay, I'm revisiting. And in Tampa Bay, there was no conversation of yanking Tom Brady, but there was some dog cursing at Tom Brady from Bruce Aarons. Now let's go back to San Francisco. You're seven and five. You don't know what down it is. Hey, won't you put Trey Lance in there? Because you know, in any adversity, the most popular player on any team mm -hmm. is the backup quarterback. And they gave up a ton to get him. I just don't want Tom Brady to be in a position where all of a sudden we may look up and Tom Brady's fighting for his job. So I don't know if they can give him that full guarantee just because of what they have as a backup in their mind and desire. So that's the only hesitation I have. I'm with you. I don't think uh, Tom Brady is focused on a trade to the 49ers. Tom Brady's not trying to figure out where he'll play next year. Tom Brady's trying to figure out if he even wants to keep playing. Mm. It's not a matter of figuring out, oh, do I want to come back and go to uh, Tampa or do I want to come back and beg Tampa to trade me to San Fran? I think Tom Brady's trying to identify, do I want to come back first mm. and foremost? <clears throat> but before you can identify that, it's going to take time. There's no reason to announce a retirement just to return from the retirement, then seek a trade from the return from the retirement. Yeah. If Tom Brady wanted to go to the 49ers, he never would have retired. So some of this, I think, sounds great on paper, sounds great on TV shows, but it would be so foolish of Tom Brady to come back because to come back and lose is just to continue to water down your legacy. It's mm -hmm. just to continue to sell. And you know this. You loved math, I believe. I don't think you yes. were math. Were you a math major? No, mathematician, though. Self-proclaimed. Bus stop degree. It's the worst. <laughs> um, here's what I know, though, and here's what you all know. If you were doing division, the greater the number underneath the flash, so the greater the bottom number, the smaller the total number will be, if mm. you will. Mm. Tom Brady, you are just going to continue to add years mm. to that mm. bottom number because as it stands now, what? Seven Super Bowls over yep. 22 years. Uh, yes. Seven Super Bowls over 23 years does not sound as good. Mm. Seven Super Bowls yeah, over that. 24 years does not sound as good. good Seven Super Bowls over 25 years does not sound as good. Your number, your potency, the strength of your legacy, the strength of your Super Bowl appearances, it, it sounds as great as it can as it stands right now. Seven Super Bowls. 22 years, mm. I believe seven Super Bowls in 21 healthy years. You win a Super Bowl every three mm. years, you're healthy. That's strong. Don't ruin that. Yeah. And since you clowned me earlier with my crises and crises, the number underneath the slash is called the denominator. <laughs> you know what I'm I'm like, what are you going to say? The common denominator, the homie numerator. Never knew who to hate it. People cater to your ego, Andre 3000. It's 3, been a long day for It's you, been a man. long day. Damn right. First the Commodore. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what's interesting in life? When something is improbable or impossible, a lot of times you would tell people 
that is something you don't desire. You don't want it. You know, I, I've noticed that when like if someone came up to you, I'll tell you, oh, man, this house is amazing, amazing. But it costs 50 million. You're like 50 million. You're like, I don't even like that house. That kitchen ugly. Like, you know, you start doing that stuff like you don't really want it. But if you had 50 million on the side to just buy a house, you might like the kitchen a little more. Right. Let's just say that. This situation, you painted it like it's going to be hard, impossible. So maybe Tom Brady doesn't want it. But let's just give you the reality. Who's Jimmy G's agent? Don Yee. Who's Tom Brady's agent? Don Yee. Wait a minute, what'd you say? Same agent? So you mean I can too short retire, game retire, means get out of my contract or at least perception, I'm done. And then all of a sudden reboot this thing, back door, closed door meetings with the same agent who can make this work, pull strings from both sides quietly without us all observing it? Does that make that $50 million house a little more desirable if it can happen? No. I looked at a $45 million house yesterday in Pasadena. <laughs> what did I do for that for? <laughs> what? Hold on. First of all, Charlie. Healy. <laughs> Wit. Not, not for my Shanks. <laughs> what do you mean? You getting 45 <laughs> I was looking, you ain't got no kids. That's the only difference between me and you. <laughs> I looked at a $45 million house, not for me, in Pasadena, California, okay, yesterday, okay. and it was still terrible. Okay. So while I love your example, okay, it looked true, like it was true, like a red roof true. in. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Come on now. Yeah, you really bought that story, huh? I really hate it. $45 million. I bet it's fresh. Send me that on red pants. Coming up, <laughs> the Lakers continue to struggle. Woo, talking about expensive, but not worth it. We'll tell you if LeBron kept it 100 or just 99 after their latest loss. That's next on these expensive Lakers on Speak for Yourself. Yeah, I hear you. On this show, we only know how to keep it 100. But others, they keep it 99. So each day, we're going to get to the bottom of who's really telling the truth. Case in point, the Lakers had a rough one against the defending champion Bucks last night. LeBron James summed up their latest loss. Take a listen to the coup. Does it tell you something deeper about your team compared to... Yeah, it tells us we ain't, we ain't on their level. I mean, I would have told you that before the game. We ain't, we ain't. Acho, is LeBron James keeping it 100 or 99? Man, he's keeping it 100, but I, I, you're starting to feel bad, big dog. It's like, are you? You want, you got to stay in denial as an athlete. Like, you got to lie to yourself. You yeah. got to tell yourself you can keep playing when you can't play in. You got to tell yourself you got a chance when you don't. You got to tell yourself you're as talented as them if you know you're not. Once you hit that point of acceptance, you just realize it ain't getting no better. So he is keeping it 100. Marcel, I don't like this 100 that he keeping it because this sounds like a real depressed LeBron James. Well, I'll give you this. Uh, look, he was caught right between keeping it 99 and our first ever 101. <laughs> he chose 101. He hit the button. Never go full 101. And he went there. He was like, we ain't, we ain't, man, forget it. Man, we ain't on a level. And it's crazy. You tell your family, you tell your friends, you'll tell fans, oh, no, we, we got a chance, we got a chance. But in reality, Acho, and I don't want you to be a broadcaster right now, I want to talk to the former player. There were times you went into situations yeah. like, ah, we need a lot of breaks. We need a 12th man on the field. Referees help us out. I think LeBron is just basically saying, look, man, I look around, look at the squad. They keep benching Russell Westbrook. They don't know which way is up. Do you understand that? I co signed that again. Right, right. Eagles playoff game versus the New Orleans Saints. I was like, we need a lot of breaks because after that, we got the Seahawks and we didn't have a chance. Mm. We didn't even beat the Saints. I didn't even beat the Saints? The Yawks won the Super Bowl. So LeBron's right. That's it for us. <laughs> <laughs> My fit line is 